midst of this uh, carburetor conversion here. I got the uh, power module from the atomic LS fuel injection system removed and some of the wiring removed and have a plan of what to do to wire the fan, the uh, MSD, and the fuel pump. Should be able to do it with two relays. So that should be a fairly straightforward affair. And, you know, the MSD plugs into everything. So it plugs into the cam sensor, the uh, crank sensor, and plugs into the coils and the temperature sensor. The, the only real problem is the, the uh, <laughs> plugging something into the crank sensor is going to be fun because it's way down in there and you can't really get to it. But we'll make it happen somehow. Um, got the manifold all cleaned up, put, put the studs in it for the carburetor. And then I flipped it over and was going to install the rubber O-rings in it and put it on there permanently. But unfortunately, I bought this, which is Holly 508-23, which has slightly larger O-rings than fit in here. I mean, I had this laying around. I must have bought it for something. I thought it was for this. Apparently not. See, they don't fit. And I'm not sure what happened to the ones that I used four years ago. I was only able to find one. So, <laughs> this here is the right one. <laughs> oh, well, I guess it's in there. So, we've got to order the right part. And then we'll get the intake manifold on. Okay, we got the manifold sitting on here again. And I made four studs for the carburetor to bolt to. And I just stuck it on here so I could see how our throttle setup's going to work. I'm thinking an original stock 944 throttle cable is going to work best. I don't have one of those, so... <laughs> We might have to make it work somehow. Carburetor fuel system for this 944. So, the 944 has an electric fuel pump from the factory that sits below the tank. And according to guys who race 944 turbos, it'll support about 400 horsepower. So that's one of the reasons, it and its fuel lines will support about 400 horsepower. So that's the main reason we just left that system alone and um, hooked it up to our Atomic LS fuel injection system. So with the carburetor, we still plan on leaving it alone and we're going to do this. So the high pressure line is going to come in. This port here from the tank, from the fuel pump actually, and this line will go to the bypass regulator that is currently on there for the fuel injection system. The bypass line has a, a return line that comes out of it and goes back to the tank. I'm thinking we can probably adjust that down to about 20 psi. So. So this section of hose will be at 20 PSI all the time. So we've tapped off here to go to our carburetor fuel pressure regulator. And I'm hoping, I couldn't find any specs for this thing for input maximum pressure. So I'm, I'm kind of hoping that 2025 is okay for this. So I guess we're going to find out when we fire it up and the fuel pressure goes all over the place. <laughs> we have this outlet capped off and this outlet will go to the carburetor. And that's where the fuel pressure gauge goes as soon as I find it. Okay, so that's it pretty much in there. I found the fuel pressure gauge, so 
we're good to go. Um, we're going to replace this fuel line, so that's just kind of temporary sitting on there. But yeah, it's the pressure line in. What you can't see under there loops around and comes up to the inlet of the uh, high pressure return style fuel pressure gauge. The outlet down the bottom comes back and goes to the return to the tank. And as you can see, this branch here goes into the inlet of the carburetor fuel pressure regulator and comes out, goes to the carburetor. And that's how we're going to do it. If we uh, had the ignition system wired up right now, we could probably fire this thing up. So that's about it. Don't really have a lot of time to work on it this weekend, but next weekend we'll be getting back at it. Um, I just threw the air filter on there real quick to see what what works and don't work. And this uh, setup here with these well, return springs ain't going to work because it runs into the air filter when you open the throttle. And on the carb inlet, we'll have to use a banjo because this hose runs into the air filter also. So that'll be some fun we have next week. And hopefully by next weekend, we'll have the intake manifold gaskets. And we'll be ready to wire up the MSD. The MSD should be actually very interesting because I didn't realize it's this before, but you have a whole programming suite you can do with the MSD 6014 for these things. So we'll be looking into that. You can also do data logging with it, which is something that I could not do with my fuel injection system. So <laughs> that should make this thing pretty fun, really. Carburetors, yeah.